chat gpt giving you the answer to every single question that you have chat gpt giving you the answer to every single question you did not even know that you had there's no question it can code but is it good enough to replace programmers will chat gpt replace programmers and whenever we say programmers here we're talking about coders we're talking about software developers so we're going to take a look at four coding examples where we get to better understand chat gpt and afterwards we'll make the conclusion we'll make the final opinion will chat gpt replace programmers so let's go ahead and take a look at our first coding example this is a fairly basic level example this is me asking chat gpt to just make a tic-tac-toe game but in the languages of Python and C Sharp and Java and HTML. So I'm asking ChatGPT to write a game in four different languages. And here is actually what it replies with. It gives me a perfect game in Python. And it gives me a great game also in C Sharp, but it doesn't give me the game in what I asked for, Java and HTML. And so we're comparing here a uh, machine to a human being so with an employer if an employer were to ask somebody to do this they know that the person would understand it. the person comes back and they have to have these games in the four different languages but here is an example where ChatGPT is not really understanding it and so it seems like with ChatGPT, we have to kind of baby it and maybe groom it some more in order to give multiple results now, we're going to work with what the, the code that ChatGPT actually gave us in this case. We're going to use this Python code. So this is what ChatGPT gives me. This is actually the code running that ChatGPT gave me, and it works. And we put in a row and a column, and we're able to play tic-tac-toe. I have kind of wanted something that looks more like our tutorial. I kind of wanted like a better grid and a better movement system from ChatGPT, uh, especially right off the bat. It seems kind of almost weird how we're inputting the row and the column. So I asked ChatGPT, I'm kind of trying to get it to get, to demo the game for me. I say, what does the user need to type to play the game? And I said, the user should enter integers, not strings. And this is kind of not the example I was looking for. So I just says, show me. And it actually co copies the whole code over again. It makes the entire code over again. And so finally I say, show me an example what the ne user needs to type to play the game. And what's interesting is that in their example, they show the grid. But if we were to copy this code, paste it, and run it, we don't get the grid still. So it was really weird in the demo, it showed it differently than actual what the code is providing. So I, I tried to continue to groom chat gpt more i say give me some grid lines for the tic-tac-toe board and finally it starts to actually create the grid lines and it makes this okay cool we're getting somewhere so make some rows it says it's not really sure what i mean so i say simulate rows on the table to better mimic a tic-tac-toe board this is like getting really specific now finally it's able to make rows this is the area where it's actually changing and it comes out with something like this and at this point I kind of, I don't really like it, but it works. And so what we get here is something similar to what an employer would do. They would ask for a demo. They would tell it to make changes. And what if you want the board to look different? What if you want the user prompt to look different? You want it to look a little bit more grid-like, or you want it to say your move X. This is something that's very real life scenario when you're actually talking about replacing a programmer. So what we take away from this first example is that it's kind of difficult to actually get chat GPT to modify its code. It's kind of really difficult to try to groom chat GPT to change its entire way of coding. Basically it wants, once it codes in a specific way, it gives you that program or that function or that output. That's, it seems like what it likes to stick with and it's difficult to get it to change. In our second example, this is actually a real, life work example where I copy code from my work because something was failing here. Uh, this is a specific line that was failing, what this code is doing, and it does a great, ChatGPT does a great job at telling me what this code is doing. This code is just reading files from a, from a folder, and if that folder doesn't exist, all of the code crashes. That's a problem. So I give it this line, these couple lines of code, and then I tell it, 
when this folder user defined does not exist, this code crashes. So fix this code to create a folder before the directory is used to get the files. And ChatGPT understands it perfectly and it gets, it adds these three lines of code and this is perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. And it even knows that this is the folder name without me telling it. It knows that this is the area that I'm going to get the files from and that's what it's doing to check. That's where it's going to check. So this was a perfect example of ChatGPT working. Although this was a very simple task, this is close to a very basic level, but this definitely shows that ChatGPT has the ability to fix errors. So this was a very good example for ChatGPT. Let's go to a more complicated task. This is an example, also real work example, real life, my personal work example. And the context is this is me using an Azure service bus in one of my projects. Make it less complicated. We can say this is connecting to a website. And the problem here is that it never connects to the website. So again, ChatGPT does a great job of understanding exactly what this code is doing. But I tell it this code is basically not allowing me to connect to the website. And this is where it gets interesting because ChatGPT doesn't give me a suggestion to fix the code with code. It just tells me suggestions, which these are true. These are things that might actually be wrong. It says, hey, basically the website URL is wrong or there's a problem with the configuration or maybe the way you're using the connect the website to connect to the website is wrong, but it doesn't give me any real code. So I asked kind of a more specific question I'm wondering if maybe this function changed. And again, this also raises a red flag because this says my training data only goes up to 2021. The reason that this is interesting is because code is always changing. This function might have changed in order to connect to the website that I'm trying to connect to. And if I'm not using the most up-to-date connection or function, that might be the reason why it's failing. But ChatGPT doesn't know what the most recent documentation is. So I asked for the documentation for this specific function because this is actually like what's connecting me to the website. This is a very important function that I use. And ChatGPT gives me this. I don't really know if this is the up-to-date function or documentation or not, but it does give me actual link to the documentation. Now the actual problem that happened here was actually in ChatGPT's initial response. It was something was wrong with the configuration of the website. That's why I couldn't connect to it. But this also raises another red flag. ChatGPT is not able to test my code. It's not able to be so integrated into my application to know that there was a connection problem or configuration problem on my website. You still need a programmer to test all of these, to test the URL, to test the configuration, and to test the actual code. You still need a programmer to do these things. So this is kind of where ChatGPT starts to fall away from actually being able to replace a programmer. But let's take a look at one more example, our last one. In our last example, we're using ChatGPT to read an HTML website, but we're using Python. This is an example of web scraping in Python. Again, we can just say it's reading a website from Python. So Python is giving me, or ChatGPT is giving me an amazing script right here that's actually doing exactly what I asked. But later on, I realized that the website that I'm trying to read is a dynamically loaded. So the function actually doesn't really work. The script doesn't work with the website that I'm trying to use. So I tell it, I tell ChatGPT, this doesn't work because the HTML web page is dynamically loaded. So it gives me an entirely different script. And this script is perfect except for one thing this function and this function fails so i have such a problem with this function i can i continue to ask ChatGPT, why am i getting this error object has no attribute this function ChatGPT does an interesting fix it says to fix the error you will need to change this line to this line when these lines are exactly the same code so I still try to work with ChatGPT in order to fix this one function. I ask, is there another way to get the 
HTML or what I'm trying to read without using this function because something's wrong with this function. It's not working. And so ChatGPT gives me a, a different function. It's slightly different, but it is different. So I'm excited and we try to use that, but now this function also fails. ChatGPT continues to give me different ways with different functions, but they're all failing. ChatGPT is not able to give me what I want. These functions are failing. And finally, after some research, I realized that this function that ChatGPT gave me is outdated. I need to be using a function called find element or find elements instead of these find element by CSS selectors that ChatGPT has been wanting me to use. And this again leads us to the conclusion ChatGPT has been using old code and it is no longer relevant. That's why this function is failing. When I updated my code to the latest function that's written in the documentation, everything worked perfectly. Again, we see a pattern of outdated documentation in ChatGPT. So we've seen a lot of real life code examples with ChatGPT. What is our conclusion? Can ChatGPT replace programmers? And the conclusion that I have is that ChatGPT cannot replace programmers. And there's a couple main reasons that we discussed in our examples. There's a risk of not up-to-date documentation using old functions. Also, ChatGPT kind of has a really hard time to modify its existing code. If you don't like the code that it created, you're going to have a hard time getting something different. The code also needs to be integrated into your program. This is kind of like getting a car part. And now that you have this awesome new car part, you still have to install it into your car. Another reason is ChatGPT cannot test your program. That's a huge, huge reason. And I can see some of these things changing in the future, like old documentation can be updated and ChatGPT can get a little smarter to modify its code better when it realizes it's not doing what you want. But things like ChatGPT integrating into your program and debugging it, companies like Chase Bank, NASA, Tesla, Apple won't allow that. High security companies will not so easily accept cloud-based API hooking into their system and being able to access everything in order to test it. Now, recently we've seen, I believe, ChatGPT become scaled down. Uh, there's been a lot of ChatGPT misuse. And this makes it even more controversial because the company OpenAPI has the ability to restrict your programmer. So how is that supposed to make companies feel when they purchase or use ChatGPT knowing that their programmer replacement could be scaled down? All that being said, I really love ChatGPT and I think it's a great tool. We have tools today that kind of replace programmers like website builders. They can make incredible websites with no coding experience. And that's what I would say ChatGPT is. It's a tool, but it's not a tool strong enough to completely replace a programmer. If you have programming experience and understanding, you will be able to do so much more with this tool. So that's why it's still so important to learn programming and coding, especially now with tools like these becoming available. A lot of work went into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me just a like. If you would like to see more ChatGPT code examples or even ChatGPT tutorials, please let me know in the comment section. If you're just a regular human being and not an artificial intelligence, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Us human beings gotta stick together. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you at the next video.